Hi everyone, I'm back with another project video and in this one we look at how we can use our Carvera CNC to make our own maze puzzle game. I will not only be overviewing tips and tricks on how to use a CNC mill in this video, but also how I combine different materials and a design created in Fusion 360 to make this end result. Let's get started. As always, I like to identify my constraints before I start my design. For the ball, which is obviously a key part of the project, I'm using a small copper BB that is about 4.5 millimeters in diameter. And I also chose a 100 by 150 by 10 millimeter piece of epoxy tooling board for the body of the maze, and a four millimeter thick piece of clear acrylic for the top cover. Both of these materials are really easy to machine with a smooth finished surface and also available from the Makera store. So with the constraints locked in, we can now move into creating our design in Fusion 360. You can of course use a lot of different CAD programs to design something like this, and in theory you could design before you know your materials, but if you design something and then realize you don't have stock that's the right size, you either need to source some new stock or kind of go back and redo your designs. The outer box for my maze is 3 inches by 4 inches, which comfortably fits in the epoxy tooling board stock while still leaving plenty of room to clamp the material down. For a more polished final appearance, I've chosen to create a pocket that the acrylic cover will fit into by making a smaller box that is offset by 0.1 inches from the outer edge. By sketching on the interface of my pocket, I can create the paths for my maze. Now there really isn't a wrong way to do this as long as there's a clear start and ending point for your game. It's also really important to leave plenty of room for the ball to pass through, so we don't want the paths to be the same diameter as the ball. As mentioned, my ball is 4.5 millimeters in diameter, and I want to create a tolerance or some wiggle room for the actual widths of my maze. Initially, I designed these to be 0.2 inches or about 5 millimeters, but I later increased these paths to 1 quarter of an inch. And to make your game more exciting, consider adding multiple paths or possible routes for the ball to travel that don't make it to the ending point, but instead puts the player back towards the start or even at a dead end. Next, I need to extrude the maze pass to create a cut into my model, which I did as a depth of 0.2 inches or about five millimeters. Lastly, I've added a few different holes to enhance the end result. Four small pilot holes are created in the corners to fix the top cover to the base of the project using small machine screws, while two larger holes are placed at the start and finish line. These larger holes only cut into the model by about a 32nd of an inch or so, but they depict where the ball should start and end. To design the cover, I simply use the offset tool to create a box within my nested pocket. I don't want the acrylic piece to be exactly the same size as the pocket because I want to leave a little bit of room for machining and also because there might be some outer extrusion left from cutting the tabs. A general tolerance of three to five millimeters should work well in a lot of different configurations. I've also copied the four pilot holes from my base onto the sketch for the acrylic cover so the two parts will line up during the assembly steps. Now we need to move into the cam portion of the project where we actually set the speeds and cutting paths to make our different parts. Again, there are a lot of great cam solutions out there and you can browse different cam solutions on the Makera website that already have profiles to support the Carvera. Fusion 360, of course, has cam built in with our Carvera profiles ready to go. The first step is to set up the project and I'm actually gonna do this twice, one for the maze base and one for the acrylic cover because I'm using two different stocks of material for these two different parts. For both, it's important to set up the model orientation and origin to make sure that your X, Y, and Z axes are pointed in the correct direction. And you can also add a stock piece to help position your model and simulate the toolpaths more accurately. But this position can be adjusted in the Carvera control later on. I always like to drill my holes first, so I've started by creating two drilling operations for the two different size holes. As the holes are located within the pocket and maze paths respectively, it's important to set the feed heights to be at the top of the model or stock, not the top of the hole. This will ensure that the bit doesn't crash into the stock when machining. It's also important to select the bottom of the holes as the operation bottom to ensure that you don't accidentally drill straight through your material. The next operation is machining the pocket for the acrylic cover. I'm doing this with a 3.175 millimeter by 12 millimeter flute end mill. This tool has feeds and speeds pre-configured for different materials as I imported it from the Makera library. 
For the epoxy tooling board I'm using, I use the softest possible profile. As with our drilling operations, it's important to make sure that our heights are selected correctly. And I've also selected this operation to machine in multiple depths of a maximum of 0.03 inches, which is the default step down for this size tool. For the maze paths, I'm using almost the same settings as the pocket operation for the acrylic cover, but I've switched to a 3.175 millimeter by 25 millimeter flute end mill to accommodate the increased depths of this operation. Again, always check your heights and don't forget to add multiple passes for a cleaner and safer cut. The last operation for the maze base is a simple 2D contour that will cut the box out of our stock. I'm using the same 25 millimeter end mill and the same feed, speed, and multiple depth setting as my last two operations, but I've added four tabs to secure this part after the cut is complete. We can then post this program by using the five operations for the maze base by using the Carvera machine profile. For the acrylic cover, I've made a new setup that again specifies the orientation of my model, but bases it off of the much thinner and slightly larger stock for the acrylic cover. For this part, there are only two operations. First, I've set the four pilot holes to be drilled using a two millimeter drill, but I've also selected for the bit to cut through the material to ensure this passes all the way through my stock. We can then create a simple 2D contour using a 3.175 end mill again, while also adding two tabs to secure this part. With these two operations finished, we can then post this program as well, and then move on to actually preparing everything on the Carvera. As I'm gonna be cutting through the stock, I've placed a piece of wasteboard or scrap material under my stock to protect my main wasteboard on the cutting table. This isn't necessary, but it's a good tip to keep your machine in great shape and also prevent accidental damage in machining mistakes. Securing flat square stock like this is pretty easy. I like to use the corner origin piece with a couple of screws and either a tab or corner clamp to hold down the stock. In the Carvera controller, I can load my file for the maze base and adjust the position before machining. In theory, this can be set accurately in the setup of our Fusion 360 designs, but I like to always check my positions and adjust here before I start machining my parts. As the stock is nice and flat, I've turned off the auto leveling function, but I've left scan margin on, which will trace the perimeter of the design using a laser pointer before cutting, and of course, auto Z probe to get an accurate Z height. Now we can sit back and watch the Carvera machine this part. For the acrylic cover, we can use a similar setup with shorter screws and a smaller clamp to hold down this thinner piece of stock. And again, watch the machine do all the work. Now to finish out this project, we need to cut off the tabs using a small saw or knife, carefully of course, and then sand any edges as needed. Assembly for our maze is pretty simple. Just insert the ball and fix the acrylic cover using small machine screws through the pre-drilled pilot holes. And that's really all there is to it. This is one of my favorite CNC projects because not only is it fun to create and watch machine, it's even more fun to play once it's all done. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for future project posts and tutorials on the Makera YouTube channel.